Welcome to Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. On this episode, Ben talks more in depth about our Mershman corn products that will be in our 2024 product guide. Hear about a market update in Mexico's GMO ban on corn. Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. Today we have our regulars, Ben, Lynn, and Turk. And I'm going to start with Ben. Ben's got something on the computer he wants to share. Yep. Um, if you remember going back two weeks ago, might have been three weeks ago by now, we had Scott Youngman, uh, Corteva Enlist Field uh, Specialist for the state of Iowa on, and uh, he kind of talked about the power core, what's all behind the power core. And for those of you that missed that episode, you know, this is the new trait platform that we'll be bringing Mershman corn on with. Um, and that is a product that is 240 choline tolerant, Roundup tolerant, Liberty tolerant, and uh, FOPS tolerant. And the, 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 the 240 component of it is unique because you can actually spray that corn when it's up to 30 inches tall without making it lazy or where it has little duck feet for brace roots and things of that nature. So um, <clears throat> phenomenal platform. The FOP that you're referring to is a chemistry uh, family, which what's a common herbicide for a FOP? Uh, a sure to. A sure to. So you'd be able to clean up in your first year, you'd be able to clean up uh, volunteer corn. So those would be, a, all four would be post application options with uh, power core yep enlist power core correct and that also gives you three modes of action of above ground protection as well so for your lepidoptera species your corn ear worms your things of that nature and black cutworm too right correct um so what i wanted to do is i wanted to highlight two products um that will be in the merchman catalog for next year that we will be, we'll be selling full steam for next year and that you guys will be able to look at our customers will be able to look at at a broad base because we're going to have them scattered out in, in many many different test plots and uh, across our sales footprint here and the two products that i wanted to talk about um, are our 115 day and our 114 day um, so our nomenclature for our our system is going to be the year of introduction just like our soybeans with a M in the middle, and then the uh, relative maturity followed at the end with a dash 30, means three modes of action above ground, zero modes below. Uh, we're following the uh, Stein system when it comes to how our traits are, are handled in the uh, <clears throat> last two numbers in the nomenclature. So a 24 M15 is a 115 day corn hybrid. Um, this is going to be the product that is going to work extremely well west. So it's got extremely strong yield data when you are comparing it to uh, DECALB 6595, DECALB 6618, and uh, Pioneer uh, 1359 are the three checks that we have it in here for. And really the reason that this product, we're bringing it to market is it is gonna be an I-35 and West product for our guys in Nebraska, Western Iowa. Um, it's got good standability. Uh, what we're looking at is a 12 bushel over the mean average, which is pretty phenomenal mm -hmm. when it really comes down to it. So we're really excited about this product. So it's going to be a taller style product than what we're dealing with from the Stein Camp. Um, it is a full flex style of product. So you're gonna be able to plant it at more moderate populations um, out there. You know, when we get into Nebraska and uh, Joe Berkey's territory, for instance, you know, they really struggle to hit 30,000 plants per acre in their dry land. So this would be a product that you'd be able to plant more of the average for what the area is. So you can be in that, you know, 24, 25, 26,000 plants per acre, and it's gonna do exactly what that, what that customer wants it to do. Um, agronomic ratings, for it, uh, we got a nine out of nine on stay green. We got an eight on plant health, eight on green snap, eight on test weight. Uh, excellent looking product. It's adapted for the west and as we move south. So on that stay green component, that seems like a very, uh, I guess, hip terminology that's coming around in the last three years or so. Can you just give everyone a, a brief insight on what stay green means when they're looking at that from, from that component? Stay green is an all-encompassing term that talks about how well that product makes it to harvest. So what that typically means is, is that it has very good foliar disease tolerance. It doesn't buckle up and die off real early. It's going to be a healthy product that is going to typically have pretty good test weight because it is going to stay alive as long as it possibly can and intercept as much sunlight as it possibly can to finish the yield out to the best mm -hmm. of its ability. Um, uh, and the other, other thing, too, is keep in mind that this would be more the traditional hybrids, and we still have the Stein hybrids 
Correct. continue to distribute Stein hybrids, which are more the shorter, high, high management, high population type hybrids. So this is going to complement our corn lineup. And then number two, which you didn't mention, is that we're going to put some special seed treatment on, on our corn hybrids, uh, particularly trepidity, which really helps on uniformity. And we know that when it comes to yield, the uniformity of emergence is critical. So we're going to have the starting line seed treatment for corn, that version, on our Mershman corn hybrids. That is correct. And one of the other things that I like about this product is its positioning. We have positioning ratings, so whether it be highly productive, um, less productive acres, high population, low population, this product is uh, very, very uniquely uh, adapted that it'll, it'll go in lots of different places. But specifically where, it is, where, where, where we are targeting its positioning is for the, the Western Corn Belt. That brings us to the 114 day product. And this product, oppositely works east. So this product is a taller product. One of the unique components about this product when we, Turk and me and Lynn went out and looked at it, is the color of the seed that's showing off of it. So it is a high, high test weight product. It is a high yielding product. Um, we're gonna place it on the most productive acre for sure. Um, it is gonna have decent flex to it. Uh, almost food, food grade, a food grade um, GMO is a market for you. Uh, this corn is gonna pass for that style of food grade because of its high test weight, uh, major lack of dent. Um, the high yielding option for this one is a, is, is a phenomenal option. And this one's placement is gonna be Eastern Iowa to the east. So um, that's coming in, like I said, at 114 day. This product is also gonna work south really well. Um, works really, really well in uh, low populations, not as well in high populations, so it's good more of a four, full flex option, great in corn after corn, great in silage. Uh, we're going to put these tech sheets up for, for the guys to look at. Um, when we look at average mean for uh, central and east, so what they call central is I-35 to the eastern uh, Illinois border, um, we are at uh, 10.5 over average when we look at east, which is Illinois and east, it is 16.9 bushel over average. And these are two years, this is two years worth of data uh, stacked on top of each other. And we have some pretty nice checks in here as well against decal 6618, decal 6391. And uh, we'll have another updated um, check in there as well that we can pass on to our, to our customers that are looking at it. So it's going to be a step change for, for, our company uh, to offer some of the more traditional type hybrids. Uh, and uh, I think we got a really uh, futuristic uh, lineup coming and, 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 and a couple more products coming uh, uh, in 24. Yep. And we've already mentioned it. And one of the unique things that's coming out of the cord to have a genetics is the uh, tar spot resistant. It seems like we have very, very, very strong tar spot resistance. That plot that we went to look at, I, I would call it very heavy. Tar, tar spot presence and, and when we went to Iowa State to the ICM conference they were talking about the uh, um, you know the rankings that they got this year that plot and the the research farm are 15 miles away probably probably less than that so so that area was definitely uh, um, hammered by by tar spot and uh, these these varieties that we're talking about definitely st stood out uh, amongst the crowd as far as the uh, um, would you say the, the the lack of foliar presence of tar spot, and then just how the the, the actual hybrids were were staying together? You could tell some of the competition what had fallen apart, and that was were we in August September there time frame. So yep, it was uh, um, some of the com competing products that were in the plot needed to get out of the field ASAP because they weren't going to make it very much longer without going down and and cannibalizing themselves. We could see them coming as we were coming down the the aisles. We could see the green the green variety and. That was the one we stopped at. It's it, it's going to be fun, and and like Joe said, we will have the Stein lineup for where we know the Stein products work. We will have the Mershman lineup for uh, some of these more variable acres and uh, some of these guys that are looking for a more traditional option. Very good, Ben. Lynn, well, a quick update for for everyone. We are in the peak seed selling season time, so. Uh, if you haven't visited with your dealer or, or got your stuff uh, finalized, we are we're hot and heavy in the uh, on the production side and the shipping side. So, uh, yeah, just a quick update on that: that our our guys are out in full force. Uh, we're, 
our dealers are are beating beating the pavement. So um, if you want to get committed and, uh, and get on the, the Mercerman bandwagon here, now is the perfect time. Supplies are good and quality looks strong. So it's going to be a good good seed year, and we're going to be off to a good start. Hopefully, the spring falls through. Yeah, our our seed production guys knocked it out of the park again this year. I think Mother Nature was very kind to us in the fall. So the qualities that are coming back on on the bin germs and the uh, the lot germs are are looking very very strong. Turk, uh, beans been kind of strong this this week. Um, market's been up and down, but uh, I think probably the news that that's moving the market a little bit is the announcement on the renewable fuels, EPA's announcement on the renewable fuels uh, actually has been digested and, and kind of looked at again and, and they're thinking that the announcements that they're looking at are the minimums is going to be uh, uh, and that was the intention uh, but but we're really going to see very, very much higher numbers and therefore the Bean market's kind of been working up. Everybody else has been kind of up and down and all over the place. But the other big news, and I know I think you've got an article on that, Joe, is this the, the announcement by uh, Mexico that uh, they're going to extend their uh, GMO ban another year to delay it a year. And so um, I think they just need a little more negotiating time to get what they want. Yeah, they pushed it out to 2025. So it's a year longer than what the original ban was supposed to take into place. So that they're important uh, uh, buyer of our U.S. corn. So that that gives us uh, takes that out of the market for a little while, anyhow. And I think they clarified a little bit more too on what what their intention was with that announcement was for food food only, not uh, livestock. Yeah. So that's good news for farmers this week. Yep. Well. That brings us to the corny jokes, and, and I just want to give a little preview here. We have Santa Claus scheduled in two weeks to be on Cup of Joe. So you want to mark your calendars two weeks from this episode, Santa Claus will be here. So I thought I'd let it, we get everybody in the mood. You know, we're only a couple of weeks, uh, a little bit more than two weeks away from Christmas. So I thought, well, we better start warming everybody up with some Santa Claus jokes, okay? Okay, so that's the plan. So, uh, how do you wash your hands over the holidays? Obviously, with sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you call a kid who doesn't believe in Santa? A rebel without a clause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how can you tell that Santa is real? You can always sense his presence. I'm sorry I didn't make any of you laugh. <laughs> well, anyhow, the big news is Santa's going to be here, and you don't want to miss that episode because uh, in two weeks, uh, again, thank you for your business this past year. Uh, we look forward to working with you in the coming year. Hope you and your family are safe and healthy. We'll see you next week. Take care.